everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be uh, discussing the anatomy of the brain, and I'm holding a brain model in my hand. And uh, let's look first at the things on the outside of the brain that you can see. So the part up here that kind of looks like a brain is actually the cerebrum. And the part in the back on the posterior inferior side is actually the cerebellum. You can also see, if you look at it from the front, you can see this little part hanging down. This is the brain stem, and we're going to look at that in more detail in a minute. And um, the lobes of the brain are pretty much named after the bones that they sit under. So in the front here, this is called the frontal lobe. Behind it is called the parietal lobes. On the side, this slice right here would be the temporal lobe. And in the back is the occipital lobe. So again, the occipital lobe is primarily where your vision centers are and the processing of your visual input is. And on the sides, the temporal lobe is primarily where you're going to be processing hearing. You can also see that this brain kind of splits apart. Now, obviously your brain doesn't totally fall apart when somebody pulls on it, but there is a split between the left and the right hemisphere. And that split is called the longitudinal fissure and it goes all the way down if you had a brain in a real brain in your hands you could actually stick your finger in there because the two sides of the brain aren't connected until they get down to this part down here the corpus callosum something else you might notice on here are there are a lot of ridges and a lot of grooves and there's one main groove that you're responsible for, and that's called the central sulcus. And it goes all the way across from one side, the temporal lobe on one side, to the temporal lobe on the other side. So you can see that groove. That's called the central sulcus. And anterior to the central sulcus, pre-central sulcus, we have this thing. It's marked in blue on this side, but it's also on this side as well. And that's going to be your primary motor cortex. So anytime you decide to move your skeletal muscles, the motor plan comes, originates from this area. So anytime you move the muscles on the left side of your body, the primary motor cortex on the right side of the brain is the one that's originating the move. Likewise, if you're moving the muscles on the right side of your body, the primary motor cortex on the left side is the one that's originating those movements. Just behind it, on the other side of the central sulcus, you can see it's outlined in red here, that's going to be the somatosensory cortex. So that's where all uh, input, all sensory input is coming in from your body. So, you know, touch, um, vibrations, all of those things, all of your somatic input comes to this somatosensory uh, cortex right here. So if we were to open up the brain and look at it from a mid-sagittal cut, you can see here's the cerebrum, here's the cerebellum, and there's a structure in here that kind of looks like a little bird. Here's his eye, here's the crest, here's his beak, there's like a little maybe seed hanging off of it, and here's his body and his, his tummy. The crest of the bird is called the corpus callosum, and again that's where tracks from one side of the brain cross over to the other side of the brain. Right here where the bird beak is, is the hypothalamus. And you'll be learning lots more about the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland when you get to the endocrine system, but that's where they're located. So deep within the brain is the hypothalamus and this little seed that's hanging off the front is the pituitary gland. The brain stem is this part right here. It consists of the midbrain, which is right here, the pons, which is the bird belly, and it kind of looks like a pea, and the medulla oblongata is down here. We also have a couple of what we call ventricles within the brain. So remember that we have a blood-brain barrier, which means that we don't let blood circulate through the brain, but we do need the nutrients and the oxygen that the blood brings in. So we filter that blood and we are very careful. We allow 
nutrients and oxygen into the brain and we filter the blood into cerebral spinal fluid. So the way we protect the brain is we take arterial blood and we filter it and we make cerebrospinal fluid out of it. And we allow things like oxygen and nutrients to come into the cerebrospinal fluid, circulate through the brain, nourish the neurons, and pick up waste and take the waste away. And so there are some areas within the brain that are little cavities, hollows, if you will, where that fluid can circulate. When we look at this mid-sagittal cut, we can't see the first two cavities. They're called ventricles. The reason we can't see them is because they're kind of right under here. In order to see them, we would have to open the brain up a little bit. And in fact, that's what we can do. Do you see this little opening here that there's nothing in it? Normally, this would be filled with cerebrospinal fluid. This is called a lateral ventricle. There's one on this side, and there's one on this side. So the two lateral ventricles can't be seen in this view. This area here, it's hard to see, but you can kind of tell that this part's bumping out, and this part is kind of hollow. If you put the two sides of the brain together, it forms a space. That's called the third ventricle, and normally the cerebral spinal fluid will circulate through here, and then it will go down this little channel into the fourth ventricle, which is right here, just posterior to the pons. So we have four ventricles, the two lateral ventricles, which are on either side, the third ventricle, which is right around here, and then the fourth ventricle. From there, the cerebral spinal fl fluid will continue down the spinal column, down into the bottom. When it comes back up, it will come back to the venous blood. If we were to take this brain and pour like plastic and use it as a mold and pour plastic into it and let the plastic harden, it would look like this. And in fact, if you take our little bird face and you look at the eye and the face and the beak and you look at this side thing from the side, you can see how it looks like the bird face. Here's the third ventricle. And there's that little eyeball that sticks through. And here would be the hypothalamus. So this is a model of the negative space of the bird. These two big things on the top are your lateral ventricles. So we don't call them ventricle one and two. We call them the lateral ventricles. The third ventricle would be sort of the face of the bird. And the fourth ventricle is right down here. And if I were to take out this piece, okay, remember here's our, sorry, here's our bird face right here. If I were to take it out and put these two together, you can see that that open space in the brain for the ventricles fits in perfectly with our little bird face. The lateral ventricles are here, the third ventricle is in here, and the fourth ventricle is down there. If you're looking at this part of the brain, you can't really see the lateral ventricles, but you can see the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle there. All right, that's it for today, Brain Structures. See you in class.